So yes guys, let's see different types of consolidation. This is on different dates. We call it as multiple dates of acquisition. Now what is this multiple dates of acquisition? Let's say during a particular year on 1-4-2014, he acquired 20% investment, let's make it as 40% investment. And then on 1 and then on 30th September 2014, again he acquired 30%. Totals to 70%, that is a holding controlling interest. Now if you observe, I have two dates of acquisitions. One is on 1-4-2011, other one is after 6 months on 30th September. Let's say I have a reserve like this. Taking as a timeline, put it as 31st March 2015. On this date, the total is let's say 500. The total from th up to 31st March 2015 is 500. Let's say here I'll mark it as 1-4-2014 and this one I'll mark it as 30th September 2014. Up to 1-4-2014 let's say the amount was it is 320. So my current year appropriation is 180. Let's say I give you one more information that between this period it was about uh, 100. So obviously this period it is 80. Now in this case how much is pre-acquisition, how much is post-acquisition? Now let's say if I analyze only with respect to 1-4-2014 and I'll take it as 70% then I'll take 70% of 320 as pre-acquisition which is absolutely wrong. Because on 1-4-2014 I hold only 40%. The remaining 30% was acquired on 30th September 2014. So what is your actual pre-acquisition? My pre-acquisition reserves should be calculated like this. We'll split it into parts. 1-4-2014 320 on that date. I acquired 40% of this. Then on 30th September 2014, 320 plus 100 total was 420 as on that date. Out of this 30% is pre-acquisition. What is the total pre-acquisition then? This is 128 and this is 126. In total we get 254. This is my total pre-acquisition. If information is given to you every year this way, this would be, make it very, very easy. But what we solve is in a different manner. How do we actually solve such a problem? What we start saying is, this is 31st March 2015. 30th September 2014. 1st April 2014. Of this, 40% is pre-acquisition. Of this, 30% is pre-acquisition. Can we identify the common part in this? What is the common part in this? The common part is this part. This part is common. So I can say the 40% plus 30% from 1-4-2014, if we take 70%, entire 70% is pre. Additional pre-acquisition is there for this small part. So what we'll start saying? one four 2014 to 30th September 2014. I'll take 30% out of this. Check you should get the same answer. My total pre-acquisition reserve is 
Now check how much is this? 7, 224 and this is 30. Totals back to your same figure of 254. Yep, both ways we get the answer. But when we are applying in the problem, I won't apply this principle. I'll start applying this principle. Is this wrong? No, this is also right. But what we'll try to apply in the problem is this way because when we try to analyze the profits and we'll start distributing the profits, what we'll try to do is, we'll try to analyze the profits as if my entire 70% was acquired on 14-2014 itself. What we'll try to do is, when we analyze the profits, we'll try to analyze as if the acquisition of the entire 70% was made on the first date of acquisition itself. So what happens when we do that? When I'm doing that, as on 30th September, sorry, this 31st March 2015, and this is 1st April 2014. This is 30th September 2014. Now if I analyze saying that the entire 70% was acquired on the first date of acquisition. Then I am saying this part entirely is pre-acquisition. And this part is entirely post-acquisition. Is it right? No. But I will start the problem this way. I will start the problem saying that assume the entire investments were acquired on the first date of acquisition itself and I'll mark it as pre-acquisition part. Well, the solution is not completed there because out of this post-acquisition part, the profits which are earned between 1-4-2014 to 30th September 2014, out of this 30% is pre-acquisition. So what we'll start doing first after we distribute between pre-acquisition and post-acquisition, we will consider only holding companies share and reserves. Now, question will be asked, why not for minority? Minority, be it pre, be it post. Ultimately, where do you add? Minority interest. So, be it pre-acquisition, post-acquisition, you do whatever. Ultimately, the entire thing is going and adding it to minority interest. So, it does not make any difference. What makes a difference is only the holding company share. Because the pre-acquisition share will be taken to cost of control, post-acquisition will be taken to reserves for CBS. So now what I'll start doing is, we have a pre-acquisition share and a post-acquisition share. We will start redistributing the profits. Redistribution with respect to subsequent acquisition. Now, why do we redistribute? Simple logic. The redistribution is necessary because we have put everything into post-acquisition and pre-acquisition. A portion of post-acquisition should be transferred to pre-acquisition. So, what we'll start doing is, we'll try to identify the percentage holding acquired subsequently. So in my subsequent acquisition, what is the percentage holding that is there? In this case, how much subsequent acquisition is? 30%. And we'll try to identify the profits. Profits earned from first acquisition to subsequent acquisition. First acquisition to subsequent acquisition, whatever profit you earn. Multiply these two, we get a redistribution. We have to reduce it from pre-acquisition. Reduce and we need to add it to pre-acquisition. Deduct it from post, add it to pre and you will get the answer. If you want, you can apply. If I distributed the profit entirely 70% with respect to 1-4-2014, I will get 224 so I'll put it as 224 in pre-acquisition column. My total reserve is how much? 
my total reserve is 500. So 500 rupees, so this 226 will be post. Oh, one second. Only his share, right? We are only talking about his share. So 224 is pre-acquisition. 70% of 500 is 350. 350, 224 is pre. The balance 126 is post. Now what do we do? Subsequent acquisition. How much holding you acquired subsequently? 30%. What was the profit earned from first acquisition to subsequent acquisition? First acquisition to subsequent acquisition, what he earned is 100. So 30% of 100, we add 30 to pre-acquisition, pre we deduct 30 from post-acquisition. So your final answers will be 254 and 96. Again, and you will get back to your figure of 350. Got it? So basically, we will not be adopting this approach. We will be adopting this one. So take 70% up to 1.4 and add 30% from 1.4 to 30th September. So whatever you have acquired subsequently from the first date to the subsequent date, what is the amount of reserve accumulated? We add it, we get the answer. Got it? Let's take down the example. I don't have to place any figures guys.
So yes guys, so when we are trying to write it down in steps, in the case of multiple dates of acquisition, what do we try to do? First thing we try to do is, analyze the reserves of subsidiary, write it as analyze and distribute. Even the distribution should happen. Analyze and distribute the reserves of subsidiary as if the entire holding was acquired on the first date of acquisition. Like we have done here. On 1st April, we will assume that the entire 70% is acquired. Second one, redistribute from post acquisition to pre acquisition only for holding company's share of Reserves, how much do you redistribute? Percentage holding acquired subsequently. Multiplied by profit earned. From the date of first acquisition up to subsequent date. This is what we redistribute. Only the holding company share guys, minority interest, least bothered. Be it pre-acquisition or post-acquisition, anyways minority interest, share of profits should be added to the same working note. So we need to pick up a new working note after the distribution table whenever we have multiple dates of acquisition. We need to do the same analysis, same distribution but at the end of the distribution table we need to start something called as redistribution of reserves. Redistribution of reserves will appear only when there is multiple dates of acquisition. An additional working note guys, you can club it under distribution of reserves itself. Check the 20th question, multiple dates of acquisition. H Limited acquired 20% shares in S Limited on 1-7-2011 for 50 million. Then he acquired another 20% another on 1-10-2011 for 60 million. Then another 20% on 1-11-2011 for 60 for 80 million. S Limited became a subsidiary of holding company H Limited on and from 1-11-2011. The balance of reserves of S Limited on 1-4-2011 that is the opening balance is 60 million. Summarized balance sheet is given to you no adjustments whatsoever. So if you check the reserves I have only one reserve that is a PNL and a general reserve as well. Yeah. Share capital and a share capital, general reserve and a PNL. The general reserve is 400 and 120 and PNL is 10 and 12. We will try to analyze the entire reserves and surplus as one because he clearly said at the top the reserve of S Limited is 60. That means there was no PNL. There is only a general reserve there. So let us try to solve such problem.
So yes guys, so let's check. Let's start solving. I have three dates of acquisition. So I'll pick it up from that. Date of acquisition. Three dates. The first acquisition is 1-4. The second, sorry, first acquisition is 1-7. Then 1-10 and then 1-11. 1-7-2011. 1-10-2011. And finally 1-11-2011. Shareholding pattern Do we have number of shares? We don't have number of shares guys directly write percentage holdings Held by holding company H 1-7-2011 he acquired 20% 1-10-2011 again he acquired 20% 1-11-2011 again he acquired 20% This totals to 60% So obviously what the minority holds is 40 Totaling it to 100 So what do we try to do? Check the previous one where we have written analyze and distribute the reserve as if the entire holding was acquired on the date of first acquisition. What is the date of first acquisition? 1-7. So let's stand. Analysis of reserves of subsidiary with respect to date of first acquisition. That is 1-7-2011. Start with the general reserve guys. I have two reserves. Balance as on balance sheet date. 31st March 2012. Check the balance sheet figure. General reserve is 120. Split into two parts. Balance as on 1-4-2011. Last year, at the beginning, I had 60. So my current year appropriation is 60 again. I'm analyzing with respect to 1-7-2011. Split Up to 1-7-2011, it is 60 into 3 by 12. During the year 1-7, that means 3 months, 4, 5, 6. This is 15. From 1-7-2011 to 31st March 2012, obviously it is 45. 45 to be considered as post acquisition 60 plus 15 75 to be considered as pre acquisition Try to check the PNL then Balance as on 31st March 2012 Balance sheet date balance is 12. Nothing given at the beginning of the year. So I'll take it as 0. Balance as on 1 4 2011 is 0. So my current year profit is this complete figure of 12. I'm splitting again into 2 because I'm analyzing with respect to 1 7. So profit up to 1 7 2011. And from 1-7-2011 to 31st March 2012. This is 3 into 3 by 12. Sorry, 12 into 3 by 12. 3 is pre. 
9 is post. Sufficient guys. We can go for distribution of reserves. Pre-acquisition and post-acquisition. Under post-acquisition, one general reserve and one PNL column. Let's start posting. First, we have analyzed the general reserve. 75 and 15. Then we analyze the PNL. 3 and 9. 78, 15 and 9. Distributed to holding company and minority in the ratio of This is my distribution. Redistribution becomes really difficult. So, let's take up the redistribution table. It should come exactly next to your distribution table. Now, what we'll try to redistribute is only the holding company shares. Minority interest, be it pre-acquisition or post-acquisition, I'm least bothered about it. So, put on a heading, redistribution. Only holding company share, H limited share, 46.895.4. How many subsequent dates of acquisition are there? Two dates. Two acquisitions of 20% each. So let's try to do this. First, redistribution with respect to Date of second acquisition. What is the date of second acquisition? 110, 2011. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Is this a small change? This will be 27. Yeah, redistribution with respect to second date of acquisition. What is the percentage holding acquired? Percentage holding acquired is 20%. On 110 2011, I have acquired 20%. Now, how many reserves are there? Two. One is general reserve, one is PL. So let's try to understand what was the general reserve and PNL or profits earned from date of first acquisition 1-7-2011 to subsequent date 1-10-2011. Let's try to understand this. I have two things. One is general reserve and a PNL. What is general reserve check? What is the current year appropriation? 60. So this is for how many months? 12 months. I am trying to calculate for how many months? 3 months. So general reserve should be 
60 into 3 by 12. Or you can solve it like this. From 17 to 31, 3, this is 9 months. 9 months is 45. So I can write it as either 45 into 3 by 9. Anything is fine. 45 into 3 by 9. Anything is same. So the answer is 15. 20% 20 of 15 is 3. So I need to add 3 to pre. Deduct 3 from post. Same way check your PNL. How much is the PNL and current year profit is 12? 9 months profit is 9. So 9 into 3 by 9. Or you can write it as 12 into 3 by 12. Anything is same. So what do we have to do? This is 3. How do we redistribute? 20% of 3. That is 0 0.6 add to pre. 0 0.6 deduct from post. One more redistribution exists. So redistribution with respect to date of third acquisition that is 111-2011. Check. Percentage holding acquired 20% again. Then my profits earned from date of first acquisition 1-7-2011 up to 1-11-2011 from date of first acquisition to subsequent acquisition. Do not solve this from 1-10 to 1-11. It is 1.7 to 1.11. General reserve. Total general reserve. 60 for the current year. 4 by 12. 20. Or you can write this into 4, 45 into 4 by 9. Anything is same. P and L. 12 into 4 by 12. 4. Redistribution 20% of 20. 4 add to pre. 4 deduct from post. 20% of 4. 0.8 add to pre. 0.8 deduct from post. Strike totals. 46.8 pre plus 3 plus 0.6 plus 4 plus 0.8. This total is 7, 8.4. 8 8.4 add 55.2. Seven deduct. This is twenty. One point four deduct. This is four. Once that is done, you can go for your cost of control, guys. You have got your figures now. Remaining consolidation will be always the same. This is the only new working note that we get. Very rarely we see three dates of acquisition. Normally multiple dates in the sense, normally he will give you two dates. Cost of control. There is no dividend adjustment, nothing. Cost of investment. My investment in the subsidiary, the total cost is 190. 50 plus 60 plus 80. Compare it with share in net assets. Split between share capital and pre-acquisition reserves. 60% of the share capital is held by him. Plus his share in the pre-acquisition reserves. Always adopt the figures from redistribution table. Holding company share. 
subsidiary share capital is 200 if 60 percent is held 120 is held by holding share and pre-acquisition reserves we have already taken in the redistribution table 55.2 175.2 this will give me a goodwill of 14.8 Then solve for minority interest. Share capital is 40% is 80. Their share in the reserves. Pre-acquisition and post-acquisition reserves. Post-acquisition again general reserve and PNL. Pre-acquisition reserves, okay. the entire thing copy, 31.2, 18 and One last working note before we go for the consolidated balance sheet is reserves for CBS. I have two reserves for CBS. One is a general reserve and a PNL. Pick up the holding company shares first. H limited shares are 410. Only simple addition, share in post acquisition reserves. Of subsidiary S, check your redistribution table, 20 and 4. 420 and 14. Sufficient guys, solve the balance sheet.
consolidated balance sheet of H, small consolidated balance sheet. Equity and liabilities. Shareholder funds. Share capital. Equity share capital is 500. Reserves and surplus. General reserve 420, PNL is 14, minority interest, one thirty two point eight. There is nothing else on the liability side. Assets. Non-current assets, under non-current assets, tangible assets, tangible fixed assets, just need to add those two figures, net blocks, 1020. Intangible asset, I have a goodwill. Goodwill is 14.8. Finally, I have current assets. Thirty-two. Balance sheet total is one sixty-six point eight. One zero six six point eight. We'll see our multiple dates of acquisition. Many more questions guys. This is without any adjustments. We'll be seeing with adjustments as well.